So I'll just uh, do a quick overview on how you would go about implementing these uh, um, odds databases or the, implementing the model within your database, I guess. Um, it's pretty easy. Whoops. Um, you just go to the website, like you can see here, uh, pods.org. You log in if you're a member. It takes you to this members click page. And on there, you'll see the how to get at um, all the flavors available of the uh, DDL that gets generated by the EA tool Kirk was mentioning. And so you just click on the one that you want. It uh, gives you a zipped um, download of the tools or like documentation and DDL required to, uh, and people in general, to uh, generate the model. So you'll see here, you get all this content so you can read up on it, but generally you just need those four SQL for the SQL Server version anyway, those four uh, files to download. And then you take that into your uh, database environment. Here we're using SQL Server Management Studio and we can see here, um, if we open the database that we're doing this pod 101 fresh, you can see there's absolutely no tables uh, generated within it. And so then you bring in those four files <coughs> And uh, there's the DDL there for creating the chunk of it, the, the model itself, then some code lookup defaults, and then the spatial um, indexes that are generated at the end. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. You can just go to the one file, make sure you're pointing at the right database, and then uh, run it with permissions. Of course, I kind of skipped over that part. That's pretty boring, but it only takes seconds. Um, Again, all the uh, code lookup values get uh, inserted with these two files here. Again, pretty straightforward. I kind of tried to show that there were no errors or to make sure that you check that there are no errors, but um, yeah, again, pretty straightforward. Second one gets pushed here. Maybe I should skip forward in the video. There we go. So that one gets generated and you can see all of the uh, results, no problem. And then lastly, we go to the, <laughs> just checking to make sure there are no errors. Uh, there we go, the spatial indexes for all the um, entities that contain geometry within the model. And then uh, now when we refresh, you can see the whole model has been generated within the database in just a few minutes. It's pretty, pretty easy to do. All you need is the membership, and I was asked to remind everyone if they can't get at the uh, uh, files that uh, help you generate the model with all those constraints, keys, and um, preferential integrity that uh, you should contact Monique, and she will help you get hooked up, maybe or just late on dues or something. I don't know. Next, we'll show a sample data load into this empty model that we've just generated. Thanks, Wilson, for providing the data. Um, I was trying to also show uh, a lot of us are in a scenario where we have pods already, pods four maybe some of us, uh, six in other places that I've uh, talked with people. And so we it would be handy to have uh, scripts, especially we're going to show a tool called FME here. Um, to load that data from one database to another, or as you get ILI runs from vendors to be able to load that data into your pods. So we'll be showing that um, here. Lost this guy. That's the actual run, but I'll just give you an overview of what the environment looks like. So this is FME. Um, it's just the desktop app. Um, the major selling point or beauty of FME, not only is it Okay, well, arguably, to me, it's the self-documenting nature of it. When you look at it, there's no SQL or Python or piles and piles of code to dig through. You can just see what's happening. So it's really easy to take over from somebody who had been managing it before, as opposed to trying to dig through the code and find out the different flavors of uh, functions and you know, nuances that people like to do. Um, so as far as... Uh, the other major benefit is it has hundreds of formats that you can read and write to. So that's really the key selling point, I think, for FME is that whether you get your your sample data or your ally data from the vendor in a 
like cell format CSV or a file geo like this. Um, it doesn't matter. You can bring it in. And we're hoping to build a collection of these scripts that we can share within the community, and then uh, everybody will benefit from just being able to pick one of these up and load into uh, Pod 7, making any transition or future data loads uh, much simpler and easier, and hopefully foolproof. So, the one thing that another thing that uh, FMA hopes with is all of this, uh, all of these entities or entries into the model require their own unique ID and thankfully uh, FME provides that and so you can see as you run through this it generates a random fluid for you and so that'll help when we go to um, put the data into the model and I'll be able to come, we're gonna have to fly through this okay so <laughs> we see we have two inspections going in we have a whole bunch of uh, ILI data going in um so we'll just quickly breeze through this part where we have to have a pipeline we can't load into um, a model and not reference a pipeline that we're uh, associating this uh, run with and so we are uh, generating that id first loading it into there with the necessary mm -hmm. attributes there's a whole bunch we'll get into that some other time send me an email if you want to know but there's mandatory fields that you have to fill out <clears throat> then um we do the highlight references like Kirk showed on the, <clears throat> the overview model. We have the pipeline, the inspection, inspection range, cross-reference, which ties these together, and then the actual ILI data. And then some other nice to have, so I'll show you when we do the video. Um, we do capture some extra data that we uh, additionally load into the model from tools that FME provides like this stats gatherer. So let's just go to the video and then circle back if we have time after. Right, yeah, there. So here you can see <clears throat> when you run it, it gives you the option. Uh, I can talk about why we have different writers later. It's just, it allows you to order the input into the model in, in a different order as opposed to having one writer, which means whatever feature gets to the end first gets written out and you don't want that. So we write out the pipeline first then the other data gets uh, read in and written out. And so here we can see the two inspections will come in. And there's another benefit of uh, using FME is you can see the data actually flow through and wherever the problem is, if there is one, you can capture it not only in log, but also you can see at what point uh, through the flow of the script, it actually fails. And here you can see all of that ILI data running through. The first 400 went through, no problem, from the references uh, tab. And here's where I was going to show you. We actually use this statistics um, collector from FME to capture the odometer min and max that's coming in from the ILI run. And then we populate that into the ILI range uh, table because it has uh, room for that data within it. And so again, runs fairly quickly, only a few minutes, and you'll have your ILI updated in, uh, in pods. And then you'll have the results down at the bottom. I'll just skip to that part. Here you can see it's writing a thousand at a time. You can set that again to whatever flavor you want. You can see the end there, there we go. So at the end, it shows you how many features are written out. It's kind of hard to see there, but then we go back to our model we're going to pre-run the sql here but we're essentially querying all the tables that we hit and you can see the results and then i've generated a spreadsheet to show that exact data but color coded so that we can see all our ids line up for referential integrity within the model you can see the pipeline id gets referenced in a few tables again back to kurt's comment one of the things that um fond of is normalization within the data model, but our feedback has been that the user community does not want it super normalized. And so there's a certain amount of flattening that um, the theme of the pod seven uh, design and that produces these um, the, the need to have these IDs in multiple tables instead of the one and showing two it in, in the end. So anyway, that's a whole other conversation we can have with you. Here to join these conversations. Here's where we capture that from and to measure from the odometer. And so it gets stored in the 
inspection range table. And so again, going back to Kirk's um, this uh, diagram here, you can see how the inspection cross rack table captures the inspection ID as well as the inspection range. And so that's how you tie those two together. In this case, we only have one range per inspection, but you could have multiple ranges if you span your routes or lines. Um, and then the ILI data is just summarized by count. I don't actually show all the, all the records, but I just show that each one of those records, again, references back to the run medical last year. Yep, a minute late. Um, with that, we'll go to another poll. Um, are you planning on implementing the new ILI module? 